Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Jerry Garrison, Tabia Law, and I'm an immigration attorney I'm here in Florida, Pensacola area. I'm barred in the state of California. So I practice immigration law in Florida and California virtually. Let's go ahead and read this here. Says, and God made two great lights, and the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made uh, the stars also. Uh, we're going to talk about asylum law uh, today, and it's interesting. Of course, I make it a practice of mine to um, read scripture every time I give these law lessons, and the reason is that uh, as an attorney, as a lawyer, ultimately all got, all law uh, comes from one source, and that's God, and that's uh, the Bible. So I think it, uh, it's appropriate to, to read a verse every day uh, before I do my law lectures. Western civilization is based on the God of the Bible, the King James Bible, and uh, I'm not going to uh, go into great detail there, but that's uh, if you research it out, and, and uh, it is a we have a Christian heritage, certainly in this country we do. Uh, our law, most of our law, comes from the English common law. And, uh, of course, the English common law has its uh, origins in, in the Bible. So, uh, let, let's move on. Immigration law is what we're discussing today, more specifically, asylum. I ran into this verse the other day. Again, I'm going to go back to the Bible and then we'll, we'll look at modern codes and the modern law on asylum law. Okay, so basically, asylum is another person uh, who is fleeing persecution in another country. And uh, for our country, we allow them in and they have an opportunity to come here, stay here and move forward if, if they meet certain requirements. But the refugee, uh, they're a refugee. They're fleeing persecution. But let's go ahead and read this, because it's fascinating. I read this the other day. This is in the Bible, uh, chapter, or Joshua, the book of Joshua in the Old Testament, chapter 20. The whole chapter deals with asylum, and it's fascinating. So I'm going to read this here, and then I'll read you the modern law on asylum. And, and, and you can see where the origins of our modern day law come from. Yeah. That, that's why I read the Bible every time I give a law lecture. So here we go. And, and that's probably not that popular in this world today, but it is what it is. Uh, so let's, here it is. Chapter 20, Joshua chapter 20. The Lord also spake unto Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out. For you cities of refuge, wherefore I spake unto you by the hand of Moses, that the slayer that killeth any persons unawares and unwittingly may flee thither, and they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when he that doth flee unto one of those cities shall stand at the entering of the gate of that city, and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city unto them and give him a place that he may dwell among them. And if the avenger of the blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into the hand because he smote his neighbor unwittingly and hated him not before time. And he shall dwell in that city until the stand, I'm sorry, until he stand before the congregation of the judgment, for the judgment, and until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days, then shall the slayer return and come unto his own city and unto his own house, unto the city from whence he fled. So in the time of Joshua, in the um, so of course yeah the children of Israel uh, God's uh, people that had been uh, 
that Moses delivered, or God delivered through Moses uh, coming out of Egypt. And now Moses uh, did not get a chance to bring the children into the promised land, right? Which is uh, most all of what you see in Israel, modern day Israel. Although what you see today is just a sliver of what God really wanted to give them, right? If, if uh, the promised land was really supposed to be everything from the Mediterranean, where Tel Aviv is, all the way over into Jordan and uh, Syria and Iraq and Iran, uh, to the, Euph the Euphrates, right? So from the uh, Mediterranean to the Euphrates, that, all, that whole area, down to the Red Sea, up into Lebanon, the whole area was a promised land. But anyways, Israel well, never got that whole area. They didn't trust the Lord uh, like they should have. So they only have a little sliver right now. And in that little sliver, as we know, that they fight you know, like cats and dogs over. But anyways, this is Joshua. After Moses passed off the scene, Joshua came in and took uh, leadership as uh, God was uh, delivering them or giving them uh, their portion or their land, right? The promised land. And Joshua was taking the land. And what he did when they were taking uh, portions of the land, they were assigning it to the different 12 tribes of Israel. But they would have little cities within those tribes for refugees, asylum. And what would happen is that uh, folks that were being persecuted, they can go into those cities of asylum and flee the persecution and be able to live and um, be safe and start their lives over. And, okay, so. We're not talking about cities of refuge today, but we'll be talking about a country of refuge, right? Our country has, we have modern day immigration rules, codes, laws on asylum for this country. And we'll talk real quickly about that, but let me finish this here. I just wanted to give you the context of that. Verse six, uh, and he shall dwell in the city until he stand. Okay, I already read that. So let's go to verse seven. Uh, and they appointed Kadesh and Galea and Mount Nephathiah and Shechem and the Mount Ephraim and Kerba Jair. Okay, I'm not going to go into these because they're hard to pronounce. And basically what it, what it's talking about here, and it, it goes on, you'll see Golan. That's, I'm pretty sure that's uh, like the modern day Golan Heights in Syria. That whole area right there. Um, let me pick up in verse 9 and we'll be done. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them, that whosoever killeth any person at unawares might flee thither and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation. So that's Joshua, uh, the whole chapter. Chapter 20 has nine verses in it. That's... Basically, that's what our uh, modern-day asylum law sprung from, came from. Uh, and you can see it there. It's, it's fascinating how, well, let me go ahead and I'll read. Uh, I'm going to read from the Kurtz Bonds Immigration Source Law Book, okay? This is the Bible for immigration attorneys. And uh, I'm going to read this section here, talk a little bit, and we'll be done. So if you go to the Kurtz Bonds uh, Immigration Law Sourcebook, 17th edition, if you have one of these, they're really expensive. And uh, you may be able to see portions of this online. Page 783, you'll see Section 3, Asylum. Let me read a section here and see if this sounds similar to what I just read from the Bible. Definition of an asylee. Okay, that's a person that's seeking asylum. This is the person that's fleeing persecution as a refugee from another country. Now, well, let, let me talk. Uh, let me just say this. This is uh, June 5th. I'm sorry, June 6th, Sunday, June 6th, 2021. We have a, a new uh, government, right? And we had elections last year. So our immigration laws is changing and 
our southern border where we had um, lots of controversies and not just recently but for a long time um, folks are coming they see opportunity and they're coming and again we have a welcoming and a loving and a great country and we want Im immigration we're a country of immigration immigration immigrants and diversity in in that sense okay is a great thing and, and it uh, adds value to our country however it has to be tempered by um, the rule of law again uh, we have laws in the books to, for legal immigration for folks with character and they will bring value to our country to come in um, now asylum law is something different right initially what we're looking at is well let me read this and we'll, we'll go into it in uh, an asylee is a person who meets the definition of refugee under INA and I'm not going to go into the the laws uh, citing there but uh, but who is either physically present in the US or is at land border or port of entry of the US at the time of he or she seeks refuge um, See. Okay. Uh, uh, abused in its discretion by its failure to address whether a responded departure from the U.S. after seeking asylum constitutes an aban abandonment where she left to obtain medical care. And so, okay, they're talking about a case there. Uh, let me go down a little bit here. Da, 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 da. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to, um, it goes into a lot more detail than I want to go into right now. But basically, asylum law is for folks fleeing persecution in their home country. Okay. Now, our situation with Mexico is folks are coming primarily, uh, in my estimation, for the opportunity that this country offers. Now, if there's legitimate persecution, then those cases are taken in on a case-by-case -case basis and examined, and, and there are different guidelines. If, if a person from Mexico or from other countries coming through Mexico are genuinely being persecuted, then this um, law of asylum that had its has its origins in the book of Joshua in the Bible should be allowed or will be allowed in this country. Yeah. Initially they're they're here. I think there's an examination later on upon their character and so on and so forth to see if they can get a green card, see if they can become a citizen and so on and so forth. But we're not talking about that right now. What we're talking about is just them getting into this country, fleeing persecution, and basically, like the Bible, the, the language in the Bible was they're playing the slayer, right? The avenger of blood. So it has to be a legitimate persecution, whether the government's persecuting them for whatever, I mean, for their religious beliefs or for other beliefs, right? For, for other situations then this country has a policy of allowing them in and giving them safety from persecution. They're refugees. And so that's what's good. Now, most of what's going on in the board today has nothing to do with asylum because it's not, in my estimation, um, lots, of, lots of legitimate cases for persecution. But I think they're are some and those are legitimate and those folks should be allowed in and they will be according to our law and, uh, so anyways that's it for today we'll, we'll talk to you guys next time we thank you so much and uh, have a good night